Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Happy New Year to everybody. And the new year is going to start off with a very active storm track. But there's a little bit of question whether we're going to have cold air for any wintry weather. But it's certainly a more exciting weather pattern for winter weather lovers. Though I will caution you, a lot of this looks like it's going to be mainly to our north and northwest, which I'll get into. But it is a track that we expect with El Nino. So we're starting to see a little bit of that pattern change. Uh, that we've been hitting at, hit, hit, hint, hinting at, I should say, since the end of last year. So this is the Winter Weather Outlook. W weather Prediction Center put this out. Just the probability of seeing, you know, snowfall or ice. You can see initially the first three days, it's all about, are you going to see four inches or more? Um, you can see out west. As we go into the weekend, though, you start seeing the probability of a quarter inch of snow, ice, sleet. You see a little hint here in the Carolinas, and then we go into Saturday, bigger event maybe for the northeast we'll hint on the on the on the carolina part here in a second but you could see the pattern here and then that one moves out and the next storm moves in. <laughs> looks to be more across the middle of the country but you can kind of get the idea wave after wave of storms moving across the country a much more active storm track so let's look at saturday you can see the probability of a quarter inch of snow ice or sleet um, confined to the mountains really Friday night into Saturday morning. Then we go Saturday into Sunday and you can see a pretty big chunk of the, the Piedmont in kind of that 10 to 30 percent range. So it's not huge and I really think this is going to be favored towards ice, but that's the kind of area we're watching. If there's going to be a chance for wintry weather this weekend, these are the primary areas. Low risk right now, Interstate 40, but really the mountains north and that lifts out pretty quickly. And then we'll get into next week here in a minute. So Let's talk about the overall pattern because I think it's really important to look at this setup because one of the things I've been looking at is just these waves after waves of storms moving across the country. So what we'll look at is the larger pattern first here to kind of show you. So this is the, the European ensemble mean of where we think we're going to see storm systems, big high pressure over the middle of the country. And again, don't, don't necessarily look at this as warm and cold. This is high and low pressure systems and low pressure systems are storms which are gonna be in the, the blues and the green. So you can see the first system passing to our south. Uh, this is gonna be the Wednesday, Thursday system. It's too far south to really spread much up into the Carolinas, but we could see a brief snow flurry uh, in the mountains and foothills, maybe even the upstate uh, on Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday. So that would be kind of interesting, just a little quick glancing system. That moves out fairly quickly. And then we go into the weekend and a much larger system starts developing along the Gulf Coast. Notice high pressure and control initially here. So this would be a, obviously a pretty good wedge setup for us, cold air damming. But when, when we start looking at this a little bit closer, one of the things I'm noticing is that this high is kind of getting out of here pretty quickly. And we're not seeing it kind of hang out long enough to really produce uh, enough cold air. And we'll get it more into that in a minute. So our weekend system starts moving across the Gulf Coast. There it is. It's going to do one of these. But watch what the high pressure does. It moves out as well. So this is a common issue with winter weather around here. You get the storm, but the cold air is not in place long enough. So we go into the weekend and look at the track at the low. Remember, this is an ensemble mean. So this isn't just a one model run. This is 51 variations kind of averaged out. You can see the track is pretty far inland. And for snow, in the Carolinas, you want to see this track a little bit further offshore so that cold air can pull in on the backside. The fact that it's kind of tracking up I-95 is an indication that this is probably going to be just a cold, miserable rain and maybe a little bit of ice, which I'll talk about in a minute. That system moves out fairly quickly. And then I'll tell you what, this system next week, it's a large system, but look where the track is. It's in the Midwest in Ohio Valley. And what does that mean for us? Obviously, less of a winter weather threat. But that could be a severe weather threat, and that's something that has my attention as well because we're going to be on the warm side of this. Warm, uh, southerly winds coming in here with those strong low pressure. I mean, that's a monster low, by the way. Look how blue that is. Well below average uh, low pressure system. Um, that could be really interesting for severe weather. So uh, we'll have to keep our guard up for that one as well, not for winter weather, but more so uh, potentially for um, some severe weather which you hate in the winter that's the bad thing about having warm weather in the winter people are like i love warm weather you don't want it in the winter because these jet streams you get severe weather so let's show you the surface uh maps of this this is the gfs you can see our first system this is going to be our wednesday night into thursday system mentioned maybe a brief mix of snow um some wet snowflakes here again incredibly light look how fast it's in and out so this is a non-event there will be snow in the mountains i do expect half an inch maybe an inch at most but that, that's, that system's just so far south and weak that it's not a big player. The big system is going to be the next one. So uh, we go past Thursday into Friday. We start seeing that low coming out of 
uh, the desert southwest moving into Texas and watch this thing kind of crank up. Notice the high pressure over the Carolinas. So initially, this is why I think the one thing we'll have to watch for Friday and Saturday is we might see some freezing rain at the start of this. Maybe a little bit of snow or sleet, but freezing rain is going to be an issue because we're going to have that dreaded warm nose punching in here. So everything's either going to change to ice or rain fairly quickly on Saturday. So this is not going to be a long duration event for ice, but there will be some ice around, I think, Saturday morning. So we go into early Saturday. This is Friday night, Saturday morning of uh, the 6th. You see the low pressure. And, and look, this is heavy rain, a couple inches of rain, probably some ice and then snow in the mountains. But even in the mountains, it could change back to rain um, sometime Saturday afternoon because that warm nose is so strong. It will flip back to snow on the backside as that low moves up the coast and you could see it kind of in and out. So again, this is not gonna be a big snowmaker for us. This is probably gonna be ice and heavy, heavy cold rain with some snow in the mountains. Now we talked about that system next week. It doesn't even track far, close enough to us to even worry about wintry weather, but look at this system. This is a monster low um, and you see that squall line. This is why next week I'm a little worried about severe weather as that system moves in. So that's why next week is gonna be a severe weather risk. But three storms, one weak one this week, strong one this weekend, both with maybe a little taste of winter. And then next week, kind of a spring storm uh, with potentially some severe weather. So let's talk about amounts, right? Probability of one inch of snow. Let's go through this event here. We'll go through the weekend. You could see the one inch probabilities of seeing snow. I'm gonna go all the way through seven days, which will be uh, basically to Tuesday. Um, you could see, Highest probability of seeing one inch is going to be in the northern mountains. Small hints of maybe some sleet or snow. It's not zero, but it's pretty dang close, guys. That's not that's not a huge risk. Probably ice. I really interstate 40 would be the area I'm watching. Same uh, same thing. We're looking at the European ensembles here. We'll go out seven days as well. Um, I'm going to stop this around eight days. This will get just to two, uh, around Tuesday. Uh, a little bit stronger signal of one inch snow in the mountains, and maybe a little hint of a little bit more in the Piedmont, but. 2% guys, it's 2%. So this is not something we're gonna write home about. It is not gonna be a big winter weather maker. And just to reiterate that, let's look at the blend of models, which I think is a great way to look at this. Take all the guidance, blend it together, um, weight it based on what's better. Um, and we'll go all the way, I'm gonna go seven days into the future. You could see the, the snow amounts, one to four inches in the mountains, maybe a hint here. And again, the areas, if we're going to see a little bit of a surprise, um, maybe some ice and sleet, it might be in this area. So that's the one area, Northwest Piedmont into the foothills. That's an area we'll have to watch potentially. Um, if we see some of that moisture get in here a little bit earlier and the cold air hangs on, we could see a brief transition period. Um, I wanna show you real quickly just how potent the winds are in these systems. The first one, you can see it passing to our south right there. Again, that's the one on Thursday. This weekend, you see the low pressure system again, a little stronger moving through, but watch this one next week and why it's probably biggest concern for severe weather. Look at that thing. I'm telling you, this is why you don't want warm air in the winter. I mean, the wintertime jet stream with spring-like temperatures at the surface, this is bad news. That's a severe weather setup. So probably bearing the lead here, everyone gets excited for snow and the potential of some snow and ice this week into the weekend. But a week from today, I think we're gonna be talking about the potential of maybe a winter severe weather outbreak here in the southeast. Certainly a strong wind event, but something to keep a close eye on and just an early heads up. We've got time to watch that and even time to watch these weekend event. But all in all, I just wanted to headline all the stuff that could be happening this week as the El Nino storm track is going to be active and we're going to be dealing with this, it looks like, for the next couple of weeks. Not cold enough air now for winter weather for the Piedmont, but we're getting closer.